we've got a special conversation with Nisad Hazari, editor of Bloomberg View, who's written this fascinating book called Midnight's Furies that talks about the deadly legacy of India's partition with Pakistan. Uh, a fascinating story of people, politics, and, and the violence that surrounded partition. Nisad, thank you for joining us today. Uh, why partition? What's, what's fascinating about it and, and why now? Well, I thought the story had a, had a relevance uh, outside of India and Pakistan that it hadn't had before because of the war in Afghanistan. You know, many people around the world are wondering why a country like Pakistan would take billions of dollars in aid from the West and still support the Taliban, provide them safe havens and so on. And of course, the reason is because of the way that the security establishment views the world with India as a central main threat. Mm -hmm. And that, that worldview goes back to partition. And the story of how that worldview was developed is not well known outside the subcontinent. It's not even very well known inside the subcontinent because mm -hmm. of the, the kind of history people are taught here. Uh, we're also talking at a time when, when you know, this whole secularism debate is is kind of hot. It was on top of everyone's mind when the elections happened, for instance. Um, in your account of Jinnah or Gandhi, mm. uh, does does the, the, the personality of, of Jinnah comes across as someone who believed in secular values? Because the perception in India is otherwise. No, exactly. I mean, the perception is otherwise because of what Pakistan turned into. But what Pakistan is today is not what Jinnah intended. He imagined when, when the subcontinent was divided, that everyone would stay where they were, that Hindus and Sikhs would, would live in, in Pakistan as full citizens and would be a huge minority, almost half the population. Uh, and so the country would look very much like India, except that Muslims would be a democratic majority there in the way that Hindus were here. Uh, so that, that's what he had always uh, believed in. That's what he always wanted. It's not what turned out to happen. Did, from, from Jinnah's standpoint, did he see Nehru and Gandhi as being equally secular? Did they share the, the idea of secularism? Well, you know, it's interesting. I think he believed Nehru was, because Nehru and, and Jinnah actually had more in common with each other than mm. either of them did with Gandhi. But Jinnah always mistrusted Gandhi because the, the, the medium that Gandhi used to appeal to the Indian masses was religion. And it was primarily Hindu religion, even though he, he cited Christianity and, and Islam and so on. But, you know, he used uh, the god Ram, he used Indian fables and mythology uh, in his lessons to people. Uh, this, this, this alienated a great many ordinary Muslims, and Jinnah thought it was dangerous because it was injecting religion into politics. We're also talking at a time when there's yet another attempt uh, by the leaders of the two nations to talk peace, and there is yet another skirmish on the border. Uh, is, is are the ghosts of partition, will they ever let India and Pakistan have an everlasting peace? I think they, they have to. I mean, we, we have to move beyond this. So I think the first step is to acknowledge the, the joint history and look back at what happened with a clear eye and acknowledge that there are mistakes made on both sides. I mean, the problem is, as long as you have one narrative on one side, one on the other, that are mutually incompatible, you'll never move forward. You need to come to some sort of agreed uh, acceptance that there is plenty of blame to go around. It was a great tragedy. There are faults uh, on all sides. Uh, and then you can start to talk about how to move forward, how, how you can start to build ties between these two countries, uh, primarily at the people-to-people -people level and at the level of business and trade uh, before you even get to the politics of it. As, as someone who, who now lives in Singapore and who looks at the region uh, with a slight, from, at, a, from, at a, from a vantage point, uh, does the business and economic rationale of cooperation and looking at us, uh, the region as, a, as one trade block, mm -hmm. does it make even more economic sense in the now than it ever did before? Yes, exactly. I mean, this, this is one of the least integrated regions of the world. It would be a much more powerful force economically if uh, you had you know, infrastructure links, energy links, trade ties. Uh, you know, trade would benefit Pakistan far more than India. It, would, you know, it could increase 10 times uh, from what it is right now. Uh, and, and, and India itself, which is looking for a, a higher platform for itself, more of a voice globally, will never be able to achieve that if it's constantly fighting little skirmishes on, it, on its border with Pakistan. You said good talking to you as always. Many thanks, Nick, for joining us thank and good luck much. with the book. Thank you very much. If you have been, thank you so much for watching.